Silica-related disease and silicosis in the lungs are chronic conditions with no cure. But several treatments and supportive therapies can help manage symptoms, improve quality of life, and slow the progression of the disease. In this video, we will cover treatment options available in Australia, including medications, respiratory rehabilitation, oxygen therapy, whole lung lavage, lung transplant, and participation in clinical trials. While medications cannot reverse the lung damage caused by silicosis, they can help manage symptoms and prevent complications. Bronchodilators are medications that help to open the airways, making breathing easier. They are often used to manage symptoms like wheezing and shortness of breath. Inhaled bronchodilators are commonly prescribed for patients with chronic lung conditions, including silicosis. Corticosteroids may be prescribed to reduce inflammation in the lungs. They are particularly useful during flare-ups when symptoms worsen. However, long-term use is usually limited due to potential side effects, such as weakened bones and increased risk of infection. Antibiotics may be used because people with silica-related disease are more prone to respiratory infections due to compromised lung function. Antibiotics are prescribed to treat bacterial infections promptly, reducing the risk of further lung damage. Other medications might be prescribed to manage symptoms like pulmonary hypertension or to help thin mucus, making it easier to clear the lungs. Pulmonary rehabilitation can be a key component of managing silica-related disease in the lungs. It involves a comprehensive program designed to improve lung function and overall fitness. There are three main areas involved in pulmonary rehab programs. The first is a specifically designed exercise program for people with lung conditions, which helps to strengthen the respiratory muscles, improve endurance, and enhance overall physical health. Secondly, exercise is specifically tailored to your level of ability and supervised closely for safety, with a focus on improving breathing and reducing symptoms like breathlessness. Pulmonary rehab programs also help with managing the symptoms of lung disease through specific breathing and other techniques. These methods can significantly improve comfort and activity levels. Thirdly, pulmonary rehab programs include education about lung diseases, teaching you how to manage your condition, recognise early signs of complications and make lifestyle changes. Support is provided to help you cope with the emotional and psychological impacts of living with chronic lung disease. Some programs are run as a group class, enabling social and supportive connection with other people with similar problems, while other programs can be offered as one-on-one -on -one interactions. Oxygen therapy is recommended when silicosis has progressed to a stage where the lungs can no longer provide sufficient oxygen to the body. Once silica-related lung disease has advanced, oxygen therapy becomes necessary if blood oxygen levels drop below a certain threshold, often causing severe shortness of breath and fatigue. This therapy helps maintain adequate blood oxygen levels, improving overall quality of life. Oxygen is delivered through nasal prongs or a face mask from a portable oxygen concentrator or gas tank. Oxygen might be administered continuously throughout the day or night or just intermittently during activities that cause breathlessness. Whole lung lavage is a specialised procedure used for severe cases of silicosis where there is a large accumulation of dust particles in the lungs. 
whole lung lavage is typically only used for patients who have not responded well to other treatments. Whole lung lavage is done in hospital under a general anaesthetic. It involves filling one lung with a saline solution and then draining it out while the other lung is ventilated. Thus, we are effectively washing out the lung. The goal is to remove dust particles and other debris from the lungs, thus improving symptoms and lung function. In a small number of advanced cases of silicosis, where the lungs are severely damaged and other treatments are no longer effective, a lung transplant might be considered. A lung transplant might be considered if a patient's lung function has deteriorated to the point where survival and quality of life are significantly compromised, but they are otherwise healthy enough to have the operation. Getting on the transplant list involves a comprehensive evaluation by a specialised transplant team. The surgery itself is complex and requires intensive follow-up care, including lifelong immunosuppressive therapy to prevent organ rejection. While a lung transplant can significantly improve lung function and quality of life, it comes with its own special risks, such as organ rejection, infection, and complications from immunosuppressive medications. For patients interested in exploring new and emerging treatments for silicosis, participating in clinical trials may be an option. Clinical trials provide access to cutting edge therapies that are not yet widely available. These trials are essential for advancing medical knowledge and developing new treatments for silicosis. Usually, therapies in clinical trials have already undergone significant safety testing and the next step is to determine how effective the therapy may be, what the ideal dose is, or who will benefit most from it. Some trials use brand new drugs, while at other times they extend the use of existing medicines into a new area where there seems to be a benefit. Patients should discuss the possibility of participating in clinical trials with their medical specialist. Information about ongoing trials can often be found through major medical centres, universities or specialised research organisations like ADRI. While clinical trials offer the potential for accessing new treatments, they also come with risks, including the uncertainty of how effective the new therapy will be and the possibility of side effects. It's important to carefully consider these factors in discussion with your specialist. While there is no cure for silica-related disease, there are a range of medical treatments and supportive therapies plus the option of enrolment in a clinical trial. You can discuss the treatment options with your GP and specialists based on your individual needs and they can help you stay informed about new developments in silica care.